see, we've spiked all the way up past the 21, uh, mid 21K area briefly, not for very long, and just basically retested the original highs that we had up here and broke through them. Uh, where do we go from here? Well, first off, I want you to note that the tape that I've been watching over the weekend has been negative, so I'm expecting a short term pullback at the very least. So you can see probably a quick drop. And we're really overextended, especially on a few. I'm going to show you them. And um, eh, let's go over and first look at this chart. If you remember back here, I was hedged most of my Bitcoin, or half of it, I'm sorry, uh, half of what I had held in Bitcoin, and I was targeting numbers all the way down to 15,800. That was key. That happened. Then from 15,800, I went long and then sold a large amount again short at 18K. This is for an XY trade and uh, it's a technical trade. Um, and that happened very quickly, went up to the 18K and then I bought it again at 15,800. Again, I bought at 15,800. This was the second retest of this uh, short term bottom right here. And then we went back up to 18K once again. So we hit there twice. The quick bounce, which is very short, and then it took a longer period of time to get up to here, of which you know that I'm hedged short 20% um, uh, from 18K. And my target again is at 15,800. Now, the next buy point below that would be the 14,056 number uh, down here. This should actually be a get it yeah, right around there whatever uh, again the, the um, uh, trading view charts are not super accurate you always have to move stuff so anyway um, that is where we currently are and should I sell another 10% from this level up here and the answer is no not really and the reason why is because I sold 20% of Ethereum as a hedge instead and this has the same pattern as Bitcoin. If we go back and look at this chart here on Bitcoin, you can see it. One, two, three, four, five, right? So you got the W staring at you. Well, same thing with Ethereum, except for I put the actual numbers here. Now I did a similar thing with Ethereum back in the uh, 1600 range right up here. And I was looking for it to go all the way down to here and it did under 1100 and retraced it went nearly perfect to that um, mid 1100 area right here and as you can see now it's created the pattern fully and I took a short hedge on it I was waiting for this um, as a possibility from 1560 exact so that's where I'm at currently. You can see the pattern that I'm looking at and you can recognize it on Bitcoin. So that's what's staring at me right now. Now the tape has been very negative. It looks like short covering is mainly what um, the market's been, uh, has done. And it was probably a, you know, compilation of different players in the market that wanted to, to get that short, you know, cover. Uh, there are too many shorts in it. And so they burn them and that makes sense um, but will this actually last well I get the pattern in place so I have to trade what is here not what I think or what I believe will happen but what I can actually see and what the price action is telling me and that's what the price action is telling me um, I don't want to be one way or the other uh, I'm mostly always along everybody knows that I'm a dollar cost averager and I just you know uh, buy and sell and overbought oversold and I repeat rinse and repeat rinse and repeat uh, of course when I have opportunities um, in certain ones which I'll go over like Hutt and Mara um, I take advantage of them and I did very well off the past two uh, trades the helium and uh, the Hutt um, there are a few others but I, I don't post every trade some of them are um, for uh, people I know that are more towards the hedge fund and institutional area that I uh, work with. But 
what I do here um, uh, is more than suffices and people should be very happy with that. Uh, now, what I noticed here on this negative uh, divergence that we have is it's very short term. Uh, so nothing is going to be written in stone and we're going to wait and see what happens because let's go over and take a look at the daily and look at some of the longer term levels because there's quite a few of them above that could be attractors once we pass this area which it looks like we have so this was your one resistance point and this has been passed so we can actually leave that as a blue line now now the next numbers up are going to be the 24 uh, mid 24 range that's where i'm going to look to hedge more of bitcoin i'll do another 10 percent um, somewhere between this 25 and uh, mid 24 500 range uh, probably i'll just wait for the 25k um, i am mostly along in bitcoin i don't have really anything to do I do see the pattern so clearly as I've shown you. So this might have a very fast and tumultuous pullback. Do, 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 do. Let's leave that blue because in the future, what's going to likely happen, just so you know, this is all not bearish. Even if we did get this pullback, let's do it from here. Even if we get a really fast pullback in the future, we're likely going to be going not only to here, but up to this area up here. And that's just the nature of charts. The break that occurred um, is going to be an attractor. It's going to be a magnet over time. The 61.8 is going to be a volume point, um, point of value, and that's going to be an attractor in the future. All right, and the statistical likelihood of us getting back up to this area up here is very high. Uh, but not only that, not only that, let's get a weekly chart too. I don't know if you guys remember the pattern that I showed you from long ago. Where, which chart did we have? There we go. Uh, no, that didn't have it in there, did it? No. Which one was it? Fairly certain I put that in there. Uh, here we go. Let's go take a look at this one. Because I've got... This is from long ago. And I've added so much new money to Bitcoin that uh, percentages are, are in flux. Um, because I bought a lot when we got that 1500 down here. So on a percentage, that's new money. So my percentages of what I own from certain areas, like where I doubled up here, don't have the relevance that they might have had from this point. I actually own a lot more because what I bought down here, uh, what I hedged from here, uh, my numbers are all off. Um, but my cost basis has been lowered uh, quite a lot, which is a good thing. So I own more Bitcoin than I've ever had at lower prices is basically what it equates to. But I want you to take a look at this chart because this is important. And if you see this going all the way back, I wrote this boom, 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 boom. It was an elongated strange pattern. And this is your the point right here at that around 18K. It's going to be uh, at some point, we're going to go all the way back up to here. Um, once we pass this area here, and this goes all the way back up to the 31, the low 31K area. And that's a pattern, and you're probably going to go, what? So this area over here, and this over here, these are numbers that go way back. This We could trade up to this zone. And that's also a possibility, a statistical likelihood in the future. Even if we get a pullback off of this, and let's draw it as just lines so I can uh, make note of that for you. Let's just draw it as lines. And all it is is a W. That's it. 
but I want to emphasize this. Everything that you see in the charts have statistics to them. And I know a lot of people are short-sighted and uh, think short-term, but I try to think of things in, as levers or gears. And over time, they, have, uh, they interact with each other. So this pattern over here interacts with this pattern and these resistance levels and this price over here and the volume that's associated with it. It all is like a symphony of music going back and forth. And, um, or tennis game, like where two players are going bouncing the ball back and forth. Um, there are many ways to, to view it, but um, there's a story being told. And uh, the, you have to look at the small and the big, and you have to uh, come up with how that story plays out. And um, it makes for interesting music or an interesting game. <laughs> uh, but the one thing I did want to point out is that there is this pattern that goes all the way back up to here, and that goes well past our 25, 24K area. And that's why I'm holding off on shorting or hedging any more of my Bitcoin. Because I don't think it's a good value right now. Um, we spiked up a bit above the 18k. Uh, if we get the pullback all the way back down to here, of course I'll exit um, uh, the short hedges that I have and go back into a buy mode. But remember, I'm always locking in profits, lowering um, my cost basis, increasing my Bitcoin and my Ethereum uh, by the way I trade, and that's the whole idea of that. And then rinse and repeat over and over. Uh, now let's go to the short-term trades that I had because a lot of people are going to be interested. They know my big term, my long-term range, so we're going to look for numbers that go all the way to the mid 24k above the 21 uh, mid 21k area. So we're looking for 24500 all the way up to here. Um, uh, if we get that move short-term, it's kind of like meh. Um, if we don't, and ultimately we're going to likely pull way back down to here. And this is just what the charts say. Uh, I don't get to make up, and ultimately we could also pull way back up to here longer term. Um, but when do each of these things happen, and what if they all happen? Think about that for a moment. What if we get a pullback all the way down here, and we get a move all the way back up to here, and move all the way up to here, all the way back down to here? Uh, you know, are, are we prepared? Are we going to trade it correctly for what the chart is telling us? And that's the key to being a good trader and to making money versus not making money in the markets. Uh, so I'll point that out. Now, you do get opportunities like we recently had with Mara and uh, uh, Hutt and a few others that will not be named because they're not relative to... Uh, uh, this, but let's go over and take a look. Now, Mara, I don't own enough of. Uh, I've got a short hedge on it. Basically means I own as much long as I do short. So I basically locked in the profits. I have nothing to do. I can't lose any money. I can't make any more money on it. I'm at a neutral point, right? And it spiked all the way up here. And I was um, not going to get naked. Now, one of the things that I wanted to let people know is a naked short is somebody who uh, is short with unlimited exposure. That means they're not hedging against what they already own, like what I do when I trade Bitcoin or Ethereum, where I'm hedging against what I already own. But I'm naked, meaning that I have a short position that I'm just uh, trading pure. And that means I have unlimited liability. Uh, the reason I hedge is because I uh, it, it basically locks in profits and I do not have unlimited liability. Now, sometimes I'll take a small percentage, maybe five or 10% if the market is a super, super overvalued. Um, but uh, that's risky. And I'll do that mostly on uh, Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum. I did that in the past, like when we ran up to 20K in, um, the, in 2017, 18. Uh, I did go naked short, 5-10%, um, and it paid off because there was a technical pattern that pulled it all the way back down, and it worked out, um, and that was done long ago, and everybody knew about it because I screamed over and over, we're going to pull back, 
And, um, you know, if we did, uh, the one pullback that I did not see was us going from the 60, mid 60,000, around the upper 60,000 range. That didn't really make sense to me. It doesn't really, it, it's kind of left some holes in the chart. So that could add to the upside momentum uh, for Bitcoin, which is fine because um, I'm a bull always in Bitcoin and crypto. So I would love to see us continue higher uh, to much bigger numbers than where we are. But I, I'm talking about well above 100,000, minimum 120, but really more like 200,000 is what I would be looking for in Bitcoin uh, from this point. The 60,000 range is an anomaly. Um, it, it doesn't really equate to anything. Uh, so it's just a, a stopping point. So we might have a future where we get a really big move up and we just continue upwards. And, you know, um, I don't have a problem hedging because you have to remember, I put so much new money into um, crypto, into Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, uh, any hedges I have are just locking in profits at this point and just playing it safe and giving me the ability to add more in the future if we get the pullbacks. Um, I've always treated that way. Now with Marathon, I, I can't add any more because I, I'm not gonna go a naked short. So I'm locked in there. I just have to wait for a pullback and see if we get that big move down. Uh, and same thing with, uh, let's see the one that we made we did really well with hut. Um, I was looking for numbers that go all the way back up to here and above. Um, I got out in the this range up here, which I thought was a great price. But now look at it. Now it's gone all the way up to 185. And again, now this one I still have more long than I have short. So mo I, I'm probably about 80% short versus uh, I still have 20%. Uh, long that I could still short more if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. This is just blown all the way up here. Right? It doesn't make any sense. Um, it's blown way past the 153, which is it's one number down here, and now it's trading all the way way up here. And it was extremely oversold, but I think on a short term basis, this is just kind of crazy. If it does get a pullback, it could pull back, you know. But there were a lot of shorts in it, so this is not completely uncalled for. But I'm still mostly long in this, 20%. Uh, uh, I've got short 80% from here, um, from what I bought down here. So, fine. Uh, you know, uh, uh, most of my profitability was taken when we went above these numbers here. And I did very well. I'm not going to complain. Uh, if we keep going higher, that's great. I don't see anything I would want to make sense of outside of the longer term targets. Now, longer term, if from here, if I want to hold, I would be looking for numbers that go short term, of course, all the way back up to this 240 range, but also up to the 370. Those are just short term numbers. The real numbers that I would be looking for go all the way back up to here. And this is the $6 range, uh, six to seven, all the way you can get up to here. But this is where I would be. This is the long-term targets right here. And um, outside of the, the visuals right here and the one right there, um, this is what you're looking at. So uh, I will not uh, hedge anymore because then I, I would have locked in just the profits that I, I, I made and. I want to let a little bit of it run to see if I can um, catch the move back down. Now, if it goes all the way back down to that 103, I will be buying it all back again. And this is the minimum target. As you can see right here, let's try to zoom in here. This right here is what I would be looking for, which is that 103. That's its balance point right there. Now, it's in a crazy realm. Uh, there's nothing to really predict which way it's gonna go from here. It's just burning on empty. 
uh, look at all that volume pump up here. So, so after the volume died here, we got the reversal. So it's just pumping. Uh, but again, I, I'm still mostly long in this. I got another 20% in total I could hedge against, but I'm not going to. I'll just let it run. And uh, we keep going higher. Fantastic. Um, uh, it was very profitable on the trade that bounced off of here. Uh, I did very well. I'm not going to get overly greedy. When you make a 50% move in uh, less than a few weeks, um, there, I have nothing to say. Uh, that was a great trade. And that's the majority of where my profits are. Uh, one that I did notice that was not acting very acting great at all is our friend here who should break out to the upside the very least short term and this is uh, XRP kind of disappointing it's price action is kind of blah to be honest with you but it's got upward um, compression in it uh, volume has taken off uh, it's definitely reverse so I'm a little bit perplexed on this one but Whatever, I'll just sit and watch. I got nothing to do on it. Um, so that's basically it for this uh, update. Uh, there's nothing to really look at. We're in the strange range. The tape itself is reading negatively on Bitcoin. Uh, we do have this pattern right here. Uh, the next levels up are all the way back up to the mid, uh, the 25 to mid 24k area. This yellow zone. And uh, we'll see if we, with breaking this, if we don't go there. Uh, but short term, the tape reads uh, negative, and we could get a pullback uh, sometime soon. Um, so that's it for this update. And I will uh, see you guys again later in the week. Have a great week.